Hey guys, I'm back in the alone prediction barn. It served me well last year, so uh, I'm gonna go through some of the contestants and do a few quick brief thoughts and try to give you my, my uh, prediction also. Now, on top of everything, what I wanna say is I have no idea what happens. I don't know who wins. Um, and uh, yeah, you just gotta take everything I say with a grain of salt. Um, that said, we've got our people here. Let me tell you who's gonna win. <laughs> just gonna, uh, this is for Alone Season 9, did I mention that? First up, I've got Terry Burns. Um, he grew up in West Virginia. Sounds like he's been all around. I will say this season, they seem to have gotten a lot of really interesting people, people with very diverse um, backgrounds in life. Uh, so that's pretty fascinating. Well, I've had a couple interactions with Terry Burns, and all I can say is he's about the nicest guy you'll ever talk to. So uh, it's hard not to pull for the guy out there. I hope he does well. Um, he's spent time in Alaska and you know, done a lot of hunting, so I think that can be really advantageous. One thing I want to say on the hunting thing is it's going to come up again over and over this as I go through these people. I always love to see hunters, people with some experience hunting on the show because it's such a key and vital part of survival in the long run. That said, you're put in a difficult position when you're dropped out there and you could you know, based on general locations, I think the Northwest Territory was really conducive to activity. Uh, not every place is like that. So I don't know if Vancouver Island was like that. I don't, uh, <clears throat> so in a place where there's not a lot of opportunities, uh, the more active you are and the more you pursue those rare opportunities, the higher risk that is. Of course, the reward is still always there if it pans out, but you could be just barking up the wrong tree. You could be hunting, putting effort in, effort in, in, and there's just nothing out there. So I don't know what Labrador, which is where this show is going to be filmed, is like. I don't know if it has game. Uh, <clears throat> they say there's polar bears, but I don't think they'll be there during the time when these people are out there. And, you know, I don't know what, I don't know how many moose are running around up there. Uh, so all that to say... I want to see hunters out there and I want to see them successful and I want to see really skilled fishermen out there and I want to see them successful because those are really the only two ways you're going to forge a long-term path. That said, if that's not the case, it is going to be a slow downhill spiral, you know, somewhat of a starvathon. Um <clears throat> And in that situation, the whole thing gets switched up. Does it it advantages a different strategy than if, if it's a place that rewards activity. Um, so, all that to say, I hope the hunters, I hope the people that, you know, choose activity out there are blessed with um, locations that reward their hard work. Uh, so, back to Terry Burns. I think he's, again, just a really really pleasant individual. I'm sure it'll come across in the show. I'm looking forward to watching it and uh, wish him very good luck. Tom Garstong. I met Tom years and years ago in Virginia. It's kind of a, um, I don't even remember where I met him. I know I met him. Um, this kind of runs in similar circles. It even shows here, you know, Talks about how he went freight train riding and did all kinds of that. Just another guy who has an insane amount of varied life experience, which is really cool. Um, he, you know, I appreciate what he writes about. Um, um, you know, the people that have been influential in his life have recently passed. You know, he's gone through some hard things and all that does just put your own suffering and perspective. Um, I don't know, I don't know enough about like Tom's specific skill set to know what's gonna do him well out there. He obviously is a thin guy, so hopefully he's a good hunter. I will say Virginia, <laughs> which is where it's from, provides lots of bow hunting practice. Uh, I can attest to that. That's where I 
uh, really, you know, have fired the most arrows at animals. So, <laughs> so you can get a lot of practice in fast. So that's good. Um, uh, then we got Benji Hill. He's another Idahoan. So I'm um, I grew up in Idaho. Clay was from Idaho. Like, can a third Idahoan really win it? Um, well, Benji Hill goes back to the same thing I was saying about Terry. Uh, these are skilled hunters that I love to see on the show. People that have outdoor backpacking experience. Um, Benji's got pack goats, which is awesome. And that means he spends a lot of extended time in the mountains. Um, and he's gonna be very well aware of animal behavior and movement. Um, ah, as one thing that might be going against him, I don't know, but he was a power lifter. Uh, and I know all, having all that muscle mass, it burns a lot of calories on you. So your metabolism is gonna be working against you if you have a lot of muscle mass out there. It'll burn off all your fat just maintaining, and then you'll be left with your muscle, which will wither away. And uh, real, you know, it's not the greatest body type to have if it turns out to be uh, a lot of starving. So, but if it's not gonna be starving, then Benji should be well equipped to, to capitalize on any opportunities out there. Uh, Again, somebody, I haven't met him, but it's somebody that when you read about him, he sounds like a, uh, you know, a great guy. He loves his family and wife and daughter and all that. So um, I I look forward to watching his journey out there. We're apparently almost neighbors. He went to college not far from where I live. So uh, good luck, Benji. Ugh. Oh, what's this? I missed this. Oh, okay, this is from Carrie Lee. I just didn't have her name on here. Carrie Lee, I know. She actually came up on a uh, course with me in the mountains. So she came on one of my, you know, adventure courses up in the woods. So she, we spent a week together. I've seen her elsewhere around at the bow shop here and there. Um, because she's from Sandpoint, Idaho, which is where I also grew up. Um, and I actually am not far from there right now at my mom's house. So, um... Uh, yeah, so I know Carrie, and she is a very chill, very chill person. She's got a lot of experience being in the woods, off the grid. She literally spent, I mean, she lives without electricity in her yurt, just, and just chills out. <laughs> very, very cool person, super easy to get along with. Um, uh, and I know she'd spent, a, she has a lot of experience being in the woods by herself, um, she's done long term, like extended trips, uh, in the wilderness, uh, you know, and is very good at the primitive type angle, good at tan and hides, good at all that kind of stuff. So again, I, I don't know how much, I don't know that she does a lot of hunting and fishing. I don't know what her, uh, what her, her experience there is. I know she's, um, done some of it. I'm sure in her in her long wilderness trips, she did a fair amount of at least like mountain lake fishing and stuff. So uh, that said, if it's again with the hunting versus like uh, the you know depending on the strategy that's going to be most effective in their area, she could be really well suited uh, to last a long time. I think she's got that mentality that we've seen be really effective. Oops low battery. <laughs> She's got that mentality that's been really effective uh, that we saw with people like Wonia and Callie Russell and and Callie North for that matter. Just people that can really take the hardship on and they don't really fight against it. They just meld into, <laughs> into the uh, environment, into nature and and can really last a long time and have a positive experience. So in that, I think Carrie could could do really well. Um, uh, so yeah, I look forward to watching her out there. Again, it's just the nicest person you can be. Uh, uh oh, I'm gonna lose track of my notes and then probably miss people. So if I miss you, don't hate me. Um, now we have, we have, uh, is Adam, Adam Riley, uh, Adam Riley, he was, uh, 
He's an alpaca shearer. This is another guy. These crazy people this year have all kinds of ra random and interesting experiences, himself included. So um, I'm going to enjoy, uh, you know, who did I? Somebody I chatted with knew Adam and really liked him. I really thought he was a good dude. Uh, I rode Adam randomly the other day because I need to shear my llamas, and he just so happens to be a professional alpaca shearer. Whether or not you knew that was a a uh, <laughs> uh, profession or not, it is. Um, you know, and so my thoughts are just another man. These guys are all they kind of have uh, similar vibes, and that they're all very unique. If that makes any sense, unique people with unique skill sets. Uh, gonna be fun to get to know all these fine folks um <clears throat> Timojin he's on here I know Timojin he came down to Virginia at one point he was gonna teach a lady some survival medicine which is really his specialty he's got a uh, you know he's a master of backcountry medicine so uh, I think he's got a pretty big TikTok following and and all that but uh I've joked with him that I look forward to seeing him like heal a sucking chest wound out in the bush with his tarp because he is the pro at that. If you want to go out in the woods and get injured, you better hope to Mojins uh, by your side. But I know he's like been putting in a lot of time and work to uh, not just be um, in the medicine realm, but also in, in a broader uh, sense. Uh, able to survive outside. I actually just saw the other day he's been tanning a bear hide. He just up and tackled the project, which is a great sign for a person if they're willing to just look at something and be like, man, I don't know how to do that. And then just do it anyway and learn in the process, which is what he's doing with bear hides. It's like, that's a good mindset to have. So watch Timojin too, a little sleeper there. Uh, <laughs> oh, Juan Pablo. Um, he sounds real interesting to me. I think uh, Juan Pablo, he might be my pick <clears throat> only because his vast experience in these various, you know, I don't know. It's hard to tell uh, what exactly he was doing <laughs> and such, but, but he said he spent 100 days in the winter in the boreal forest basically alone. He spent, you know, a long time uh six months with his partner jennifer foraging and living off of like starvation rations uh, he's done all these other adventures so this guy's spent a lot of time outdoors again i don't know how much of a hunter he is i don't i just uh, plead ignorance on that one but i think he's really knowledgeable um and he's a you know survival skills instructor i'm sure he knows all the tricks for this and that build a boat do this trap that trap um, and because he has such vast experience alone starving, we've gotten big game three seasons in a row. My assumption is it's not going to happen a fourth season in a row. It's just statistically odd. That has nothing to do with anything, but I'm going to say no. In which case, I think Juan might be really well placed to tough this one out, um, because he's just experienced it already before. I mean, if he's really been out foraging in solitude for a boreal winter this is basically what he's going to be doing again a hundred days uh then i don't i can't imagine why he would quit any sooner than a hundred days out here so uh, you know there could be a, a million other unforeseen circumstances that occur i'm not sure what he was foraging but i think that experience is real solid he might be just might just well be my pick um we got jack Turcote, who's uh, another, he's a young guy, um, and good for him, you read about it, and he's a guy that's just following his passions, he's um, been hunting and fishing all over the place, uh, and so good for him, he's uh, another, uh, I mean, all these guys this year sound just really interesting, I encourage you to read up on their stories here, um, because they're real interesting folks. Uh, and so Jacques, we're going to get to know and watch. I'm excited to do so. He, he's a guy that came out west, got in the mountains, and just fell in love with it. So that's cool. Um, 
<laughs> we got Jessie. And let me see, though. I lost her page here. I just remember she was on here somewhere. This is how organized I am. It's, it's horrible. Uh, New Zealand. Oh, I think this is her. There you go. Yeah, Jessie. She had a pretty normal childhood, she said. Then she got out in the woods and started to find that as her, like, uh, home away from home, sort of. Joined the Air Force, became a SEER specialist, which is awesome. I know they teach amazing skills for uh, escape, uh, for survival and that. If it was just that she was a SEER specialist, I don't know how much weight they put on it because we've seen um, they're not necessarily the same skills that translate into an alone type situation where you're not trying to escape and get rescued, but you're trying to last as long as you can. That said, she has a lot of other experience. Um, um, and she, she continues to teach SEER training, but she also spends a lot of time teaching wilderness survival in general. So, uh, I think she'll have a lot of, I think she'll be tough. No doubt about it, um, given her, her, the trouble she's overcoming in the background. I know she knows and is friends with people that I know, <laughs> like, uh, who, who really respect her. And so I think she'll be really tough. Uh, now we have Igor Lemansky, who I'm very excited to see out there also because <laughs> he has an Armenian Egyptian mother and a French-Russian father. What a night, what a cool mix. Armenians are naturally resilient people after all that they've been through in their history. Very tough, probably about as tough as they get as far as historical path and still being here. Right there together with the Copts of, <laughs> of uh, Egypt, which his, apparently his mother is of Coptic descent from what I understand. Uh, Fascinating peoples, both of them. Fascinating, deep uh, cultures. Uh, having that ancestral connection is, is uh, for me, was actually really valuable because uh, it just puts into perspective everything you're doing, uh, having you know direct relation to what your ancestors went through. It being probably a thousand times worse. <laughs> so so uh, that's really interesting. He's got his French Russian father, uh, fascinating mix of a guy, and it's hard not to pull for uh, you know the old Armenian Coptic guy out there. <laughs> but uh, no, I uh, but he's got a lot, of, you know, like he's got the mindset that reminds me of like Carrie Lee, some of Wonia, uh, these people that can really just. I think they'll be able to like cruise through the suffering of the of the event because they're not actually going to be suffering as much. I think they'll be able to view it through a lens um, that helps them to like integrate with their experience and just kind of it is what it is. And you go through it and you learn from it and you become a fuller, better person. Uh, so I think you'll do really well uh, on that entire mental aspect of the competition. Look forward to. Look forward to meeting him out there too. So, <laughs> again, it's a. Yeah, we're just going to have to see. I really don't know what's happening. I'm kind of full of it when I talk about all this stuff because all I have is you go on a few pages of people. That said, this season in particular, we've got really interesting characters, really cool people we get to meet. I'm excited to talk with them as the show progresses and as I get to watch their journey. Uh, the people that I have interacted with on here, I really like all of them. So it's hard for me to root for anybody in particular, but I'm hoping everyone does really well. And if as a random oddball, I'm gonna go with uh, Juan Pablo as my guess. Um, <laughs> only because, oh come on, he's been out, he went out foraging 100 days in the boreal forest. He knows what starving is, but he's probably put on a ton of weight and he's gonna, I mean, once you've already done it, it's not that hard. It's like I, uh, even on alone, the isolation, 90 days alone or whatever it is. It's like, to me, it wasn't super hard because I already had that isolation in Russia and been super miserable. Uh, so I understand that, you know, once you go through something, 
you kind of have that perspective to throw back on it. And he went through not wilderness living situation, but as he says himself, he starved basically for a hundred days. So, so that's pretty, uh, pretty impressive. Um, anyway, all that to say, it, it gets the big, the big curveball is does somebody get big game? And I think there's people here on here that are most likely to get big game, but if not, it all of a sudden the whole ball goes into the other court of skill sets, which is more of a, uh, you know, it less favors the hunter, more favors the person who's like chilling out, not burn a lot of calories, able to endure, um, <clears throat> not just mentally, but actually just physically has enough reserves to endure for a long time. Um, so we're going to see. That's my, a few of my thoughts just for fun. Um, Hope you enjoy the season. I'm going to try to do, I'll try to do some season updates perhaps as I watch, but I'm going to actually pretty soon be out of service for most of the summer. So I don't know how much I'll be able to do my weekly uh, alone updates, but um, follow along. I also have some other really cool stuff. If you're an alone fan, keep in touch. <laughs> Have you do that Instagram or on YouTube here. I'm gonna have some really cool stuff coming soon that I'm excited. I'll be excited to announce and put out. And so, uh, yeah, thanks for watching, guys. And for all of you that I just read about, and in case I missed anyone flipping through my unorganized papers, uh, sorry, but I'm excited to meet you all nonetheless. Cheers. <laughs>